Whose idea was it to murder this guy in the rain? We spent months following them with home video cameras. They said, you try to spend day after day witnessing the pain and the indifference to human life. It's a hard thing to get used to when you see how careless people take life for granted. This is not easy to watch. Look away if you must, but police don't have that luxury. The stain on this wall was produced by the decaying body of a tiny five-year-old girl who was abducted from in front of her home. Ariana's body was in the room above us. <laughs> Everybody that has kids, you know, that, that's, that's your worst nightmare, you know. This one is definitely real person. This is real person. I wonder to myself sometimes if society's ever going to change. And every one of these homicide cops is working about 20 brutal cases at any one time. There's the body bullet. Got a wedding ring on? And some wife and some kids someplace are about to have their whole life undone. And when you ride through the streets of Philadelphia with these detectives, it's clear that for them, the city is a large scrapbook of human cruelty. This is actually right where we're just... Here in this neighborhood, a former monk is taken by surprise at an ATM machine. The camera shows the man behind him about to shoot him, not for the money, but for the thrill. And then laughed about it, high-fived with people over it. Exact words, I really lit him up. Oh. And what happened if you shot him? I ran out to my and then there are the murderers who confess with no remorse. After this confession, all the murderer can think about... They, they still got some food down there? Right. So why would anybody live their life as a homicide cop? <laughs> to catch the bad guys? Sure. But one cop confessed to a darker attraction, calling this a ticket to the greatest show on earth. Absolutely. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah. But you report, we see firsthand. Yeah. We're right there. We're in the rooms what with everyone these people. So it's just the drama, the sheer drama of it that you're addicted to. Well, Listen, Diane, yeah. not only are we in the front seat watching yeah. this, we get a rush out of it, too. Absolutely. Let's face it, right. you know, to do this job, you, you want to be where the action is. You want to be out there running. Running fast enough to catch a killer, like the rapist who murdered Shannon Schieber. It has now been nine months since police sent the DNA from the semen left at the crime scene to the lab. Finally, the lab sends word back that they have a match. The DNA is the same as that collected from two rapes that trace back almost a year before Sheber was killed. So this is a serial rapist. Straight ahead. They come up with two hits, okay? In those two hits, one of the girls was able to tell us that she saw her attacker. That's where we get the composite, this one right here. So finally, police are getting a description of the attacker. He seems to be somewhere in his 20s with light brown or olive skin. And they also learn more detail about his M.O. He covers the eyes of his victim, sometimes with a shirt or his hands. He speaks to them quietly, saying they should be more careful about protecting themselves. And something else, terrifying. This man is so thin, so impossibly thin, he can squeeze through the security bars you place on windows. The press dubs him the center city rapist, and all over Philadelphia, women are terrified. This is really scary. My doors stay locked. I don't walk out alone late. And they were right to be afraid. Soon, it will become clear just how much further the killer is willing to go. I was living in that neighborhood. I was looking for that face everywhere. One woman looking over her shoulder doesn't yet know how personal the hunt for the killer will become. Never assume that you're safe. When primetime real crime mystery, Stranger in the Bedroom continues.